Welcome back everyone. As you probably guessed from the title, the thumbnail, and the intro, this is the rifle that we're going over today. This is the Geisse Super Duty 16. Now they make these in a number of different length configurations, but the 16 is going to be the most popular for sure in America simply because you don't have to worry about any NFA laws. Now they also make a 14 and a half, but on the 14 and a half, the muzzle device is pinned. So you're kind of locked into the surefire system of muzzle devices, which isn't necessarily bad, um, but there are options out there. And then of course they make these upper receivers in a number of lengths, uh, 11.5, 10.3, etc. et cetera. Um, but today we are focused on the entire rifle here. And this is probably, as of when I'm recording this anyway, the most requested rifle review that I have here on the channel. People have been requesting me to review this for a long time. A few reasons for that. One of them is I kind of go into the weeds on like details on AR-15s more than most and we'll do that today for sure. And um, I just have a ton of different AR-15s to use as reference points. Uh, additionally, a lot of people consider this rifle to be sort of like an elite rifle but at a more affordable price. Um, so there's different tiers of AR-15s and depending on whom you ask, you'll hear those price points uh, vary a good bit. Uh, but this one is one of those guns that everyone kind of thinks you can buy confidently and never have to worry about and shoot for the rest of your life. And pass it down to your kids and it will still run so i suppose we'll get into all that here uh, as the video unfolds but before we do that let's head out to the range shoot some groups with it and then come back in and walk through it piece by piece in order to see what kind of groups we can get out of this rifle we have our target 100 yards downrange. we have a ctk precision rest here a very high speed stock full of sand in the rear uh primary arms uh one to eight plx scope so awesome glass I uh, can't complain about that. And then um, in the gun right now, we have some Remington. This is light for caliber. It's 45 grain hollow points. Uh, so we'll try that and then we'll just try a couple different uh, grains and match loads and things like that. And uh, then we'll go check them out and then we'll continue on with the video. All right, let's do it. Certainly not terrible, but I kid you not, yesterday when I was refining the zero, I shot a half inch group with that exact same load. But of course the camera's on, opens up. Anyway, <laughs> um, X up, Federal, uh, 223, it's trophy copper. So it's an all copper bullet. And although it's 55 grains because it's an all copper bullet, it will uh, interface with the lens and the grooves on the rifle right as if it was a little bit longer. Um, that's a video for another day, if you guys wanna know why. But trust me on that, it's true. So let's see how it does. Interesting, interesting on those results. All right, I slow it up. It's some Winchester loaded with the Sierra Match King Hall Point Oak Tail 69 grain round. I've said this a million times in videos uh, because I believe it to be true. I've probably tested hundreds and hundreds of barrels and rifles at this point, but I think the 69 grain, I'm not saying it's the most accurate for your gun. I'm saying it's the most consistently accurate across a whole bunch of guns chambered in 5.56. Of course, now that I say that, it'll shoot like crap, but regardless, I have high hopes. Let's go check them out. Definitely some good groups in my opinion. Uh, so first up, of course, is that 45 grain load. And right there, we're at an inch and seven eighths on that one. Then we came over here with the 55 grain trophy. And it looks a little bit tighter. So right there, center to center, we're at an inch and five eighths. Then I wasn't lying. <laughs> the uh, 69 grainers there, tightened it up real nice. 
So we're right at center to center, three quarters of an inch, five eighths of an inch, somewhere in there. So, I mean, that load shoots well in any barrel that's made well. This barrel's made well, it shoots well. With the groups out of the way, we're gonna get into the details of the rifle. And one thing I should note is that this rifle was sent to me in July of 2022. There have been some rolling changes with these rifles. So if certain things are a little bit different than the one that you have, uh, that could be why. But as I intimated in the beginning, it does have that Surefire muzzle device on there, which works as a quick detach for any of your Surefire SOCOM silencers. It also works, it is compatible with a lot of B&T silencers. So you aren't locked into just one type of silencer silencer if you get this gun in a 14.5 say and it's pinned but of course on the 16 it is not pinned because it doesn't need to be for nfa reasons uh, but this one here has the closed time flash hider and as you guys can see on there this has a ton of rounds through it lots of buildup on there but that's just a product of good hard use and the surefire muzzle devices are very good in my opinion particularly this one's probably my favorite um, it has that closed portion on the bottom, which is nice. So if you're firing unsuppressed, you're not getting a lot of dirt and stuff getting kicked up off the ground, but you still get good flash hiding, uh, flash signature reduction. And of course it does have the taper lock type of mount, which allows for a good carbon seal uh, if you're actually firing it suppressed. Now, Surefire Silencers, we have full reviews on them, all of them actually here on the channel. Um, but one thing they can get is carbon lock. And uh, one thing that's nice about the Surefire muzzle devices is that they're actually designed for that and they have a feature where you can basically just unlock your silencer, fire around, and your silencer will go shooting down range. And it's actually a design feature. It's designed that way. A lot of people think it's strange. I kind of agree with that. But it is nice to know that even if you do get carbon lock, you're not going to have an issue. But this one here, uh, we've used three different Surefire silencers on it throughout the testing that we've used it with, and it's ran great with all of them. So can't be mad about that. Uh, continuing on back, we do have our 16-inch Dicely barrel. It is cold timer forged, chrome lined, MP tested, HP tested. It is a tapered, sort of heavier profile uh, barrel. So what I mean by that is unlike the government profile barrel, which would be uh, light back here and then heavy out front, which makes zero sense. I have ranted about this for years on the channel. Geisley was smart and actually designed a purpose uh, designed, I guess you could say, profile. So it's a little bit thicker back here, and then it continues to taper down past the gas block right here, which is perfect. That's exactly what you want for a general purpose type of rifle. Uh, this one, again, is a little bit heavier than some because it still has a 0.75 gas block, uh, but some of the other ones out there will be a little bit lighter, but I think the use or the marketed use of this one being a duty rifle, um, it definitely is perfect for that use and I have no qualms at all about the barrel. Uh, it's chrome lined, one in seven twist, mid length. I mean, it's just, it's a very, very well thought out barrel. Now I should note that this particular rifle does have a phosphate finish on the outside of it. Of course, chrome lined on the inside. Uh, there was a period of probably like six months where these rifles were going out with non-phosphated barrels and it had a different finish on there. So just know that if you do see them in the wild, that is why. Uh, continuing up to our rail here. Again, you're gonna see some things that have changed over the years as it's been in development. This one here has the full 15 inch rail. Now this rail is unique to this rifle. So you could, I suppose, theoretically try to buy this rail and put it on another AR-15, but it's probably not going to work. And we will explain why, but again, 15 inch, it's a pretty rigid rail. There are more rigid ones out there, but it's a good balance in my opinion of weight and rigidity. It has M-lock all the way around, not just the three, six and nine positions. So it has them at the intermediate positions as well. And then we have 1913 rail on top. It is uh, T-marked on there per mil spec. So if you guys are into the T-marking system, there you go. One of the rolling changes it has with it is it has these steel reinforced QD anti-rotation points here on the receiver. So I, you guys watch the channel know I don't really run slings a lot here uh, for several reasons. I have videos on it, um, but there are a ton of uses like military law enforcement where a sling is a good idea and highly recommended. Um, and what I've found is that a lot of the ones that have aluminum uh, QD points over time, if you're using a steel QD insert in there, you are going to cause wear on it and it will either lose its anti-rotation capability or it will just lose its QD capability all the way around. So that steel reinforcement in there is smart in my opinion. So if you have that, honestly, I can't see that ever wearing out. Steel on steel, you should be good to go the whole time. Uh, continuing on back, we have Geisley's barrel nut, which is great. Um, there's been, you know, some changes to it over the years. This is the current configuration that is available on like their Mark 14 series of rail and it locks underneath here on the bottom. And one thing that I was alluding to earlier in the video is that the interface here where the rail meets up with the upper receiver, it's actually dovetailed in there. 
And so that way it's anti-rotation both by the design here of how it clamps into the, the barrel nut, but it's also anti-rotation based on the dovetail of the actual rail into the receiver. And underneath this entire uh, rail system, we do have our pinned Geissele Super Duty gas block. It is a very durable system. I have a full video on it. Um, it's a great system because one thing that's cool about it is it allows, if you just buy it separately on its own, it allows you to get the pinned low profile gas block on pretty much any barrel if you have a drill press and some basic mechanical skills. Um, but of course it is pinned from the factory so you don't have to worry about the uh, gas block walking off or anything like that if you get under a high fire, high volume of fire type of situation. It's just a very, very good design. Additionally, the actual screws on the bottom of it there are dimpled into the barrel. So it's about as bomb proof as you could get for an installation of a gas block. Before we get into the upper and lower receiver, I should mention, because I know people will ask, what are these sights? These are offset 45 degrees, Ultradyne sights. It's actually a very interesting system. It's a peep within a peep. And when I first heard about it, I thought it was really weird, uh, but we've been shooting them on a couple rifles so far for a long time now, probably a year now. And uh, they're a very good system that does work as advertised or just a little bit outside of the box. Uh, but getting into the upper receiver, as I mentioned, they are forged 7075 T6 aluminum and they are forged in the Geissele factory up in Pennsylvania. That's one thing I should mention is that pretty much everything on here, maybe like outside of a few small springs and things like that is made at the Geissele facility in Pennsylvania. I have been invited up there for a factory tour. It hasn't worked out schedule wise, but if you guys want to see that, definitely let me know because uh, I think it would be pretty interesting. But it is mil spec, the upper and lower in terms of dimensions, um, but there is a lot going on with it. So if you look over here on the right side of the receiver, you will notice that we do have a short throw and be safety. So I'm not, as it comes from the factory and you can switch these if you guys are left-handed out there, uh, the safety is ambidextrous. It's a 90 degree throw, pros and cons to 90 degree. You guys can debate it down below in the comment section. Uh, but it does have uh, the short side on the offhand side. And again, if you're left-handed, you can swap that out. And the longer version is over here on the left side of the gun as the shooter looks at it. So uh, looking at the actual pins here, the takedown pins, these are Geissele's proprietary pins. Uh, you can use any mil spec pins that you want to, but these ones have a little bit of extra texture on there. It's just kind of a smart design, kind of one of those nice to have things but not like make or break. The magazine release is also textured similarly. And over here on this side of the firearm, we do have the maritime bolt catch. It's larger in every area that matters. Um, I have these on several rifles and I like them. There's absolutely zero issues with it at all. One criticism people will have of this rifle though, for sure, particularly given the price point and its competitive offerings, is that it doesn't have ambidextrous controls outside of the safety. I think that's a fair criticism. That said, most of us who are right-handed on AR-15s simply use the standard controls. And honestly, most of the left-handed folks I know also simply use the standard controls on an AR-15. So it might matter, it might not. I don't know. You guys let me know down below in the comments. For the YouTube reviewer, this is just standard disassembly. This is not modification, but to take the upper and lower off, we will do so like so and get into some of the components of it. If you look in the upper receiver there, you'll note, of course, that it does have M4 feed ramps, which is exactly what you'd expect for this type of rifle. And it does have that chrome line bore. This one here is very dirty because it has a lot of rounds through it, but that is not a bad thing. Charging handle here is the Geissele Airborne charging handle. It's a great charging handle. I believe I actually have a full video on this as well, but it is ambidextrous, so you can use either side to unlatch it and pull on it. But the Airborne version here has smaller latches. They make one with larger latches, and anybody who's a paratrooper out there knows that when you're jumping, you don't want to have a lot of things that can snag and catch on stuff, hence the airborne uh, nomenclature, if you will. Additionally, back here at the rear of the charging handle, we do have this raised portion which interfaces with the upper receiver. So that way, if you're shooting suppressed, it prevents some of the gas from coming back in your face. Um, it's a nice feature. I really like these charging handles. I have lots of them, as anybody who watches the channel again knows. Getting into this piece right here, there's a lot that could go into this uh, video uh, on the bolt carrier group. It is the Geissele REBCG, and they've actually, a couple components have changed over the years as we've kind of intimated. Um, but if you guys, so right now it's 2023, so probably around 2015, 2016, on um, like soldier systems and, and places like that, there was a lot of articles about a very new coating that, has, that was just, I guess, 
created or perfected over at the Picatinny Arsenal. And it was called a nano coating or a super nano coating, I believe is what they called it at the time. Uh, but Dicely reached out to the folks at the Picatinny Arsenal, for folks who don't know, that is a government weapons testing and development facility, reached out to them and worked with them to, I guess, quote unquote, perfect that finish. Ah, I can take this thing out here to perfect that finish. And Geisley bought the proprietary rights to use it commercially. I believe the military still uses it um, in other roles, but essentially you will hear it referred to as a nano coating, a super nano coating, a chrome nitride finish. There's a lot of different finishes that you will hear it referred to as, but it is proprietary, so just know that it is what's on here. Um, supposedly the best lubricity out there and corrosion resistance. And if you guys, again, look back even before Geisley did it when it was just the military announcing this thing, uh, they were big fans of it. They made some huge claims. And again, Picatinny Arsenal doesn't have any money to make, unlike a commercial company. So uh, making those claims is very, very interesting. Um, but the bolt on it obviously has that finish. Our extractor has that chrome finish on there, but um, the bolt has the Sometimes it's called Picatinny finish on there. You'll hear it called that as well. But one thing that's unique about this bolt that you wouldn't know looking at it is that it's made out of 158 carpenter steel. But it's unlike any other 158 carpenter steel bolt that I know of. Uh, the folks at Geisley actually worked with the folks at Carpenter Steel. Carpenter Steel is the name of the company for folks that don't know. Um, and they actually worked to create a, they call it 158 plus grade steel. And then they also changed it into a forged bolt. So, um, Long story short, the reason they've changed it to a forged bolt versus a traditional bolt is so that the grain structure of the metal kind of it works outwards at all the different angles. And the, what the only other company I know that's ever done that has been Schmeiser in Germany, uh, and they've done it on a few different bolts out there. Uh, but Geisley is using it on their bolts, and what they claim is the forging of it and changing the grain structure instead of just being lines across the board makes it five times stronger than any other bolt on the fact um, on the market. And just kind of looking at the science of it, that makes sense. Cause if you look at how AR-15 lugs shear, they shear off one lug at a time. And that's because Geisley claims, and I believe, I believe it to be true, that typical grain structure is just lateral on a 158 bolt. But if you forge it, it does center around the center, if you will, the way the hammer forging mandrel works. Um, so it definitely makes sense that it would be five times stronger. I believe it. And as of right now, these things have been out, I believe since 2020, these rifles, and I have not seen a sheared bolt. And I know there's a lot of trainers that use these, a lot of companies that put a high round count through rifles. I haven't seen a shear bolt at all. Same is true here for the tail. I haven't seen a shear bolt on that. One thing that's interesting is that that finish, that nano coating finish that's on there is also on the gas rings. I'm not sure how that affects life of the gas rings, but as of right now, this rifle still has the factory gas rings on it. We'll get into round count here in a little bit, um, but it's doing just fine. So the uh, carrier itself is made out of 8620 uh, steel, which is a very proven material. Obviously at this point, it has the full auto trip on there, has our staked um, ga gas key, which is good. The gas key itself is chrome wine, which I find interesting uh, that they didn't go with the finish on the inside there. They went with traditional chrome. Um, and then the carrier rails here are extended. So uh, again, you kind of think of like what other companies are doing for enhanced bolt carrier groups. A lot of them are doing sand cuts. Geisley didn't do that. What they actually did was extend out the rails. So that way there is a longer engagement surface in the upper receiver. And that's how they're preventing tilt uh, as it goes throughout the operational process, which I think is interesting for sure. Um, it's definitely better than not, I guess you could say. And then additionally, our cam pin appears to have that chrome finish on there as well. And it is oriented such a way that you can only put it in one way. And it has the muzzle, the little arrow pointing towards the muzzle. So that way, uh, basically when cam pins break, uh, they shear apart. And one thing that a lot of folks have found out, Aero Precision, there's other companies, LNT, I found out is that if you put the carrier in this, excuse me, the cam pin in the same way each time, it like doubles the lifespan of that part. So this one here is engineered and cut in such a way that it can only go in one way in the bolt carrier group. So that is smart in my opinion. Uh, this cam pin is actually varied over the years uh, on these REBCGs, the enhanced reliability BCGs. Uh, but just know again, the newer ones that I'm aware of anyway, come with this cam pin on there. Now moving into the lower receiver itself, again, these are all made by Geisley in their facility. So here's a criticism I'm gonna, lower, I'm gonna put on them rather. Um, and then you're gonna hear a, a, a pro as well. So I would like to see the actual uh, 
magazine well flared a little bit more, kind of like what BCM does or what Aero Precision does with their M4E1. I say it in all my videos, there's no reason not to have more flare on your AR-15 mag well, <laughs> more flare, uh, like it's a, a restaurant video or something, but there's no reason not to have more flare on there. It just makes reloading easier and it doesn't hurt anything. You don't reduce the durability of the item or anything like that. Uh, but continuing on to the rear here, if we look inside the lower receiver, it is full auto pocket cut. I believe all AR-15 lowers should be full auto pocket cut. Is it a big deal for everyone? No. Uh, but hopefully one day during my lifetime, we will uh, get the NFA thrown out and the Supreme Court will rule on it and overturn it. And we will restore our right to own full auto firearms. And that allows you to, without any sort of milling, just drill through there and drop in your full auto sear and also it makes the air 15 lower receiver lighter it's a lighter weight component so there's simply no reason not to have it in my opinion our uh, trigger guard here is enlarged that is an aluminum piece made by geisley in-house to make it enlarged i dig it the trigger is a two-stage trigger that i believe is still proprietary to this rifle i don't believe you can buy it by itself that may change in the future though but essentially two stage we have our take up here i'll do it with my thumb so you guys can see that that is the first stage and it does have sort of a hybrid of a curved and flat trigger shoe um, but the first stage is right there and the brake is nice. It's right at two pounds on my scale, the brake. It feels very similar to the SSAE to me, which is my favorite trigger, as you guys know, and the reset, very short, very tactile, very audible. And the brake, again, very, very good. Geisley uses full power hammer springs as well, which is something that differentiates them from a lot of uh, trigger companies out there. So if you're using like M193 or M855 that has those harder military primers, you don't have to worry about it at all like you do with some aftermarket trigger companies. So phenomenal trigger. Very, very good in my opinion. The grip is uh, sort of A2-ish in terms of how it feels, but better. Uh, it still has that finger bump. I'm not a huge fan of that, just to be honest, but it has a much more aggressive texture. It's also larger than an A2, so it fills your hand a little bit more. I do dig that. Uh, looking at our uh, buffer, assembly here and uh, our excuse me receiver assembly one thing you'll note is the castle nut is double staked so it's staked in two different places which i do dig this particular one obviously being an fde has the fde finished uh six position carrier it does have the drain holes in there that a lot of receiver extensions don't have has our b5 system stop mod stock i have a full review on it uh, stop mod stock is one of the best stocks on the market without question a little bit wider than some it has some battery storage compartments also has the quick detach anti-rotation sling attachment point this thing is combat proven it's a very very good stock and then additionally inside there we have the geisley super 42 buffer system so has our braided spring, which honestly, in my opinion, is probably overkill for the AR-15. Uh, braided springs have been used on a lot of machine guns over the years. I do believe the Germans are the ones that came up with it pre-World War II. It is stronger. It will last longer. There's no doubt about it. Most people aren't wearing out the recoil springs, though, so will our buffer springs. But it does have the Geissele H2 weight buffer in there as well. Very, very good system overall in terms of smoothening if that's a word, smoothening out your recoil impulse on the rifle. We had to move across the property here because one of my neighbors is mowing lawn is pretty loud, but there's a few things we still need to discuss on this gun. One of them is going to be reliability. So full disclosure, Geisley did send this out to me. And right now the lower receiver has about 2,500 rounds on it. The upper receiver has just over 2,000 rounds on it. Uh, so why would that be? Well, when they sent it out again in July of 2022, uh, they had a bad run of barrels. And if you guys look around ARFCOM, you'll see other people reporting exactly what I had. And basically, the barrels were great, they shot great, everything was normal until you tried to clear the rifle. So you could be shooting and everything would function fine. And then when you went to drop your mag and clear your actual round out of there, it wouldn't come out. So in the gun right now, we have some Remington 55 grain and I cannot rack it out. This is the second time this has happened. This happened with um, some M193 as well, but obviously I can force the bolt home and then empty it the old fashioned way. But that's not good. Something's going on there. And it had to do with the barrel extension. It was just not sized correctly. And uh, basically I posted about it on Instagram. If you guys follow me over there, that account's already been deleted, but I also posted about it on Twitter as well. If you guys are looking, probably less likely my Twitter will get deleted. And uh, Geisley reached out and said, hey, you must have one of our bad ones. I gave them the serial number. They're like, yep, you do. And they sent a 
complete new upper receiver and I sent the other one back. Uh, so that's why this upper has less, or less rounds than the lower. Uh, but outside of that one issue with that one bad barrel, the gun has had zero malfunctions of any kind. We have ran lots and lots of rounds through it, mostly uh, Remington 45 grain 223, but all the, also lots of 556 five, Igman from our friends at Firearms Depot. For folks that don't know, they sponsor the ammo here outside of 9mm, pretty much all of it. And I definitely appreciate the folks over there at Firearms Depot for doing so. And again, over 2,000 rounds now, as you see it, with zero malfunctions of any kind, suppressed, unsuppressed. Uh, you guys saw the accuracy on there sub MOA groups and uh, just a very, very durable, well thought out design. Uh, could there be some criticisms of it? Of course, we've had them out here throughout the review, but in terms of is this kind of like the one and done rifle that I would recommend to viewers here on the channel? Well, let's talk about price before we do that. So right now the MSRP on this, I believe is around $2,200. Uh, they make them in a number of different colors. This one here, of course, obviously is their FDE version. They make a couple different versions of green, a couple different versions of black. FDE, I believe they make gray as well. So there's a lot of different versions, but if you kind of look at just this rifle in your standard black um, and you look for sales, you follow the deals, those sorts of things, you can find this right now for around $1,600 to $1,700 uh, street price delivered to your dealer. Um, so it is sort of expensive. It's in the same tier as like BCM, Daniel Defense, now Geisley, and it's again one of those brands that people recommend to just kind of like buy and not have to worry about it. Again. Full disclosure, we had a problem with one of ours, but Geisley was quick to fix it. And from what I understand, there was like 30 of those barrels that went out. One of them just happened to go to me. Sucks for Geisley, but <laughs> it is what it is. Um, so yeah, I think it is a very durable rifle. It does everything extremely well. You guys saw the accuracy was very good. Um, I would have zero issues like converting this to a machine gun and feeling confident that everything would hold together through very, very high round counts uh, just because of the materials design and the material specs that they chose for everything on here. I think it's a very well thought out gun. Um, it is a little bit heavier than some, like a lot of people recommend, like for example, the Daniel Defense uh, DDM4 V7 lightweight as kind of like a do it all rifle. And I agree, it's a good option. Uh, this one's a touch heavier than that, just due to the barrel contour that we talked about. It's not a heavy barrel by any means, but it's a little bit heavier than like the lightweight tapered barrels that a lot of people recommend. So it's a good medium. And I think for the vast majority of people, if you have the budget for it, and and it's something that offers features that you like, yeah, absolutely get it. Um, I think it's a very good rifle. Like I said, um, we've had over 2,000 rounds with a one that is made correctly and have had zero malfunctions. And you guys already saw the accuracy. Handling is good. It just has a good feel to it overall. And it's a feature loaded rifle. So I think that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions that we didn't cover, definitely let me know down below in the comment section. You can also post those questions over at my various social media sites that you see here on your screen. If you guys are liking the video and you're not subscribed we do videos like this all the time so hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell as well if you've done both of those and you're not seeing two to four videos a week here on the channel trust me we do two to four videos every week here on the channel very very consistently um, and if you're not seeing them it's because there is an algorithm censoring your eyes from my content to beat that algorithm you can sign up for the email at the website here on your screen it goes out once a month and it has all the videos since the previous month's email went out so that way it's not super spammy but you're also not separated from the content by an algorithm. Uh, if this thing goes on sale, silencers go on sale, sites go on sale, optics go on sale, anything like that, it will go out in my daily deals email. If it's in that email, it's the cheapest that I know of anywhere on the internet on that particular day, whatever the item is, because I do the price checking for you. So hopefully I save you some time and I definitely save you some money if you signed up for it for sure. Uh, so you can sign up for that at the website here on your screen again. And uh, that's all I got for you guys. Thank you all for watching. I truly appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.